So today I want to talk about what genre this D-Day commission is in, and some of the problems it creates as well as some of the opportunities. If you don't know about the D-Day project then I'll put a link up to videos about it because there's quite a few already. Just to remind you though, it's a commission about D-Day from the Bournemouth Symphony Orchestra. It's a big piece, choir and orchestra. This fits into a certain kind of category, I suppose, of public art. So art that is not commissioned for private, personal and domestic consumption, but is serving some sort of public purpose, commemorating something. beautiful spring day. Spring really is here, isn't it? And uh, let's go through into the back garden. I do have some wonderful footage from the Worthing project, which I want to share with you guys, but I am absolutely flat out on this D-Day thing at the moment. Wow, sunny. Um, try and work out where some... go under the magnolia tree. Um, yes, yeah, so today we're talking about public art. So art which serves a public function, maybe a commemorative function. Uh, often in the visual arts, it's actually in public spaces, you know, in our cities. Um, it's often funded by public money. So yeah, this category of public art. Let me just pop you down, actually. Um, within that category, there's kind of a subcategory of art which commemorates wars and military activities, conflict of some kind. And if you think in music, this genre of uh, music that commemorates war or conflict goes right back. I mean, if you think in the 19th century, you've got Tchaikovsky's 1812 Overture, you've got Beethoven's piece Wellington's Victory, which isn't very well known. Interesting piece, I might well talk about it more another time. Perhaps linked to this as a genre is a genre of the Requiem, which is kind of a sort of public piece. Uh, if you think Mozart's Requiem is obviously the kind of the benchmark for later Requiems in a way, because it's such an important piece throughout the 19th century and beyond. Um, you've got Verdi's Requiem, you've got Brahms's A German Requiem. If you're one of my Cambridge students, then you'll know about that because I teach a course on it. You know, you've got Foray, you've got Derufli, these big pieces which are kind of staples of the choral world. You know, they're for choir and for orchestra, they're often done on special occasions. They're often brought out in Remembrance Sunday. Now, perhaps the most obvious model of all, in a sense, for this piece is the Britain War Requiem. Because it's politically relating to conflict, it uses texts from uh, Wilfred Owen's war poetry interleaved with the Requiem text, and of course it was commissioned for a, a very important public occasion, it was the reopening of Coventry Cathedral in the 60s. And even in the 21st century, right at the moment, this is a sort of very much living genre. Um, John Adams wrote a big piece called On the Transmigration of Souls after 9-11, which is about 9-11. Uh, he said he didn't want it to be a requiem. I mean, almost by saying that, it's putting it in the genre of a requiem, or at least relating it to the genre of a requiem, and it definitely does fit in that genre. It's got, you know, big forces, choir, orchestra, it's commemorative, it served a public function, I suppose. And then if you think even just last year, in 2018, there are a whole slew of commissions um, to commemorate the 100th anniversary of World War I. Uh, you could hardly move for commissions about World War I last year. So this is a very much a living genre. Now I have nothing against this genre, but I do think that public art creates a problem for artists. And the the problem is this. As an artist, you are in some way, I hope, being critical of the world that you're in, so that you're not existing just to support the status quo, support the state, the government, or uh, received opinion. I believe that artists need to have some kind of critical role in society. And if you're trying to be critical, then of course, if you're being paid to operate in some kind of public capacity to commemorate something, then is there not a danger that you're getting drawn back into not being critical, but just supporting the status quo? So that's one problem with public art. Does the artist get kind of subsumed by the kind of the status quo? And uh, for example, you know, this is a big piece, a big commission for me. So what if I do stuff, you know, should I be worrying about like, oh, will they like that? Is that appropriate? Uh, does this need to be in good taste? Could I write a piece for this project which would be in bad taste? And is that a problem? Like maybe, I mean, I like the idea of writing pieces in bad taste in a way. I mean, not necessarily that I want to offend people, but I think the idea that music should be nice, should be good taste, that it should be polite, you know, these are things which potentially it's right for artists to rail against. So there's, I suppose, a question of uh, decorum and taste uh, that's relevant for this piece. If you think, I mean, one of the things that really annoys me about a lot of this public art, to be quite honest with you, and I'm not going to name any pieces or any names, but, um, and I'm not thinking of one thing in particular, actually, but I just think there's a real sort of danger that this stuff becomes really pompous and pious and self-righteous, and uh, I, I just don't want to do that. I mean, 
I'm not a um, I'm not in this to write kind of pompous, self-righteous music, I suppose. Um, there's different kinds of pomposity as well. So um, this is something I'm thinking about a lot at the moment. There's another problem, though. Do I impose my own kind of liberal metropolitan elite agenda on the subject matter, uh, or do I try and listen more to the voices that I've recorded, the two veterans who are kind of the core of the project, and do I try and explore uh, more their worldview. I mean, just to give you one example, there's one point in the interviews when Jeffrey and Robert are talking about how they felt beforehand, this is one of the things that the children ask them, and they're saying how they were excited. Uh, and pretty much that's it, they were just excited, they were not afraid. I felt very excited. It was a momentous occasion, and I was very conscious of it. I was very excited indeed. But that's it, only excited, nothing else. It was a big moment. Yes, indeed. A very exciting time in our life. I want to talk more about the Britain War Requiem at some point, because it's so relevant to this project, and it's such a... It really, I feel, sets the kind of... It, it's the kind of the archetypal piece uh, of this kind of genre nowadays. I think so many of these pieces, you know, the John Adams that I mentioned, so many of these things that, you know, again, last appearing last year, uh, they kind of, they all go back to the War Requiem in so many ways. I feel this piece is going to become, like, a very different piece to the War Requiem, though, because um, if there's one thing the War Requiem doesn't do, it does not capture excitement about war. And this is something to talk about, and I'd like to talk about it more. Um, and what that means, and why, whether that's a good thing or, or not. Okay, I'd better wrap this up because I really need to go and finish this piece and I can't spend too much time vlogging. So if you've enjoyed this video, then do subscribe to the channel because I do one of these vlogs every Sunday night. And leave a comment, I'd love to hear what you guys think. Have you ever been commissioned to do any public art yourselves, maybe? Or do you have any thoughts about what the artist's role should be in society and when they're doing this sort of public art? Uh, let me know, I'd be really interested to hear. And I will see you guys next Sunday.